All right, well, everyone, hey, welcome. And uh, uh, today is the AOCS student e-poster pitch competition for the lipid oxidation and quality division. So uh, really a wonderful um, program lined up here with students presenting their research. Um, and uh, we look forward to their student presentations. Uh, we'll have feedback from judges and um, also participation with you, the live audience. Uh, so here's what's going to happen today uh, for each of the three competition finalists. Uh, they will present for five minutes. After each student presents, there's a seven-minute question and feedback session that will take place. And then you can post your questions um, in the chat area, and then I'll see those, and then I can ask the, uh, the students. And then after all the presentations have ended, we'll pause the stream for a few minutes to allow the final judge deliberations. And during that time, um, the audience uh, will be able to vote for their favorite pitch. So uh, lastly, um, we will announce the first and second place winners of the AOCS student pitch competition uh, for this division. So um, so let's get started. Our first uh, speaker, oh, I need to introduce our judges. So excuse me. Um, our judges are Mark Pignicter, Sean Pan, Zen Rothrich, Bruno Chava, and Stephen Hansen. So, and, our finalists that are presenting today are Epec Bayram, Lingli Liu, and Roman Sobolov. So a really great group of people. And our first speaker is going to be Epec Bayram. Um, Epec is a student um, uh, at the uh, University of Massachusetts Amherst in Eric Decker's lab. Eric's a friend of many of us and uh, AOCS, former AOCS president. Um, but Epec um, received a Fulbright scholarship in 2019. Uh, she's currently pursuing her PhD in food science, and uh, under Dr. Decker, she began her dissertation research on lipid oxidation and antioxidants after completing her coursework with the 4.0 GPA, focusing on determining and analyzing synergistic antioxidant activity in different food matrices to improve food quality and safety. She became a member, a uh, student member, of several professional organizations, including IFT, NEIFT and AOCS. Um, of course, we're very happy she's a member of AOCS. Uh, in addition to her laboratory projects, she co-founded a graduate student organization, UMass Fulbright Association, and currently serves as president to strengthen the networking among Fulbright scholarships and assist new scholars in adjusting to campus life. She earned her bachelor's degree in food engineering in 2018 uh, at the Middle East Technical University in Ankara, Turkey. Um, where she graduated third and received seven honor certificates for an outstanding GPA. So she's worked on several research projects with well-known companies and did two engineering internships in Turkey uh, at Andalo FA's beer factory and Alco biscuit plant. Uh, she's also provided her email as well. So, so without further ado, uh, Epec will present determination of antioxidant synergism between tocopherol and myrcetum in bulk oils. So, Hello everyone. Today I'm going to present you my research on determination of antioxidant synergism between tocopherols and myricetin in bulk oil. The food industry combines different antioxidants in order to prevent the rancidity coming from the lipid oxidation reactions. Synergism is a concept where the antioxidant combination have a greater effect than the sum of the individual antioxidants. Synergism has multiple benefits, including prolonged shelf life, low production costs, and as well as uh, reduced food waste. In my research, I combine alpha-tocopherol and myristin in stripped soybean oil 
and I analyzed the oxidative stability of oil by measuring lipid hydroperoxides and uh, hexanol formation by gas chromatography. One-to-one -one antioxidant ratio combination has shown that uh, tocopherol alone had eight days of lag phase, myrcetin alone had 21 days, and the combination of them gave 45 days of shelf life. Since 45 is greater than 21 plus 8, we conclude that the combining these two antioxidants improves the shelf life. When I analyzed the different uh, antioxidant ratios, I also concluded that regardless of the antioxidant ratio, as you can see, all the combinations acted synergistically. My second objective was to understand why actually these antioxidants are acting synergistically. So understanding the mechanism is critical because it helps us to design food systems with better oxidative stability. Also, it kind of helps us to predict which antioxidant couples could be synergistic. Normally, alpha tocopherol itself is a free radical scavenger and the myrcetin is metal chelator. So combining of these two different actions might result in the synergistic activity. So in order to analyze if uh, metal chelating plays role in synergism, I picked another antioxidant called taxifolin and performed a comparative study. So when we co compare myricetin and taxifolin, we see that they both have very similar chemical structures and they both are able to chelate the metal ions. The UV spectroscope result has shown that the both antioxidant can chelate the ferrous iron in oil with the same uh, stoichiometry. The logic here is that we've already showed that myricetin and uh, tocopherol is synergistic. So if the mechanism is due to the metal chelating ability of the flavonoid, we would expect taxifolin to be um, synergistic with tocopherol as well. Therefore, I designed another oxidation study with exact same conditions, but this time with uh, taxifolin instead of myricetin. And again, for one-to-one -one antioxidant ratio, taxifolin had three days lag phase, tocopherol had six days, and the combination was nine days. So they didn't show any synergistic activity together. So this concludes that the metal chelating behavior did not play a role on the synergism. The second possible mechanism could be the regeneration of an antioxidant by another one. So we see that myricetin has a lower redox potential than tocopherol. Therefore, myricetin can actually reduce oxidized tocopherol back to its original state and improve its activity. This could be the reason why they acted synergistic. But when we see tocopherol and taxifolin, they have the same redox potential, though, so they cannot uh, regenerate each other. To further support this, I analyzed the antioxidant degradation behavior throughout the storage study uh, by using HPLC. And what I observed is when tocopherol was alone, all tocopherol was gone after the eighth day. But when we combine it with myricetin, we see that the tocopherol survives for 31 days, which shows the regeneration of the tocopherol. But when we check the same result with taxifolin, we don't see uh, any change in the behavior. So in conclusion, we concluded that these two antioxidants are synergistic due to the regeneration of tocopherol, but not because of chelating ability. Thank you. All right, great presentation, Yvette, wonderful research. Uh, very pertinent in today's world, uh, stabilizing uh, fragile molecules and foodstuffs and providing safety. So um, I'm really interested in the synergies of those. So um, right now we're gonna open up the uh, your paper for discussion with our judges and the audience. Audience, if you have any questions, just type them into the chat and we'll make sure they get answered.
if we may, I'll start. So thanks so much, Ipik, for your very interesting and nice talk. And for this really nice picture I can imagine, it's very difficult to give all this information and form of your project into just five minutes, but really well done, actually. Um, I'm interested in the mechanism because you showed us um, that you could basically exclude that the uh, uh, metal chelating ability of, um, of, of the myricidine may play a role in this synergistic um, um, effect. Yeah? So, but what about other um, mechanistic um, possibilities? Because you showed that um, obviously also very nicely that the, uh, the myricity might um, yeah, regenerate the um, oxidized tocopherol and therefore explaining this um, um, synergistic effect. But might there also be some other mechanisms um, be involved in this um, in ex and therefore explaining the synergistic effects, such as um, the antioxidant partitioning. Uh, because you added a, a myristine, and this is more, um, I would say, more um, polar antioxidant, and together with the more non polar antioxidant, uh, tocopherol. So, do you think that also? the partition of these antioxidants uh, might play a role as this bulk oil, it was, I guess it was soybean oil, can also be considered a um, WO emulsion. Yeah? Thank you very much for your comments and your question. So actually that is something we also consider antioxidant partitioning. But in my system, I firstly like strip the soybean oil so actually the phospholipids in there uh, are just like removed. So when we remove the phospholipids, it is kind of uh, the reverse my cells is also gone. So I don't really have like that kind of structure so like in, to create an interface in my samples. But actually this is our next step. We are uh, planning to put some association colloids and check how the partition will impact as well. Oh, okay. Then. Thank you so much. I might also have another question. Um, because as far as I saw, you have um, analyzed alpha tocopherol. Um, what about why have you chosen alpha tocopherol and not gamma tocopherol, for instance? Because on some, it was reported that alpha tocopherol or gamma tocopherol might even show higher antioxidant effects. So, why have you chosen alpha tocopherol? And are you planning also to? Um, analyze the synergistic effects um, with this um, gamma tocopherol. So yes, it is true. Like delta and gamma tocopherol actually has uh, greater stability compared to alpha tocopherol. But what I why I chose alpha is uh, alpha is pretty cheap compared to the other ones. So it is like more affordable if we are planning to use like design food systems like with low production cost. And but one thing that we are planning to consider, not just directly delta or gamma, but we are planning to try this with mixed tocopherol as well. So this will be an, another research. Yeah. But looking forward to this result. Yeah. Um, yeah, I can go for the next question. Yes. So thank you very much, uh, Ibek. It was a really great presentation. Can you explain me uh, what is the reasoning behind following hexanal and either other uh, aldehyde that you have uh, followed during this, your study? So the reason why we analyze hexanal, uh, I use soybean oil and the main uh, composition, like the main fatty acid in soybean oil is uh, linoleic acid. And when linoleic acid oxidizes, uh, it forms hexanal. So hexanal is kind of the main oxidation product there. So it is kind of like, okay, if we detect hexanal, we can conclude that, yes, it's oxidized. Thank you. Can you tell me more about other synergies that you have seen uh, in your research, maybe outside of myrcetin? I haven't performed like uh, another couple yet so my my idea was here like more mechanism focused on research so i just picked a random couple and i started my research like that so i i tried myricetin and that worked pretty well and it worked in emulsions as well so we are working on that right now and i tried with taxifolin too as you saw that didn't work 
thank you. And is there a specific application that you see mesh setting to, to be efficient beside uh, in oil? Uh, besides oil, you asked? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, it could be in, incorporated in uh, emulsion systems as well. But although like myrcetin is a flavonoid, it kind of has a like a medium solubility. It is not really soluble in water. It is mostly soluble in lipid phase. So we could also use it in emulsion, but because of that reason, it is not very active in emulsions. But when it is combined with tocopherol, again, we got like pretty good uh, synergistic activity. Thank you. Thank you. I'm going for the next question. Thank you, Ipek, for the very exciting study. Um, my question is, um, how do you determine that active concentration uh, of the uh, meriting uh, was 50 micromolar uh, with 50 micromolar of uh, um, tocopherols? So while I'm deciding that uh, concentrations, first I checked uh, also like regular soybean oil, because regular soybean oil also contains some tocopherol there already. So I didn't want to add some like um, meaningless amount of like high concentrations or low. So I picked a range and that was the first experiment I did actually. And I analyzed the oxidative stability of all. And I, I tried to like optimize in a way that it's a, okay, it's a like good amount of shaft life, but it's not all also like taking like months for me to do the experiment. So that's how I decided the concentrations. Okay. And second question, um, do, you, um, do you know what's the natural sources of the mericetin or any, you know, uh, industry application uh, to, 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 to get this molecule from? Uh, so normally like mericetin is um, a flavonoid and it is available in like berries, like if I need to give some example, mostly in cranberries, it's available in onion as well. So this is also another plan that we, we, we are hoping to do. So directly getting the food source and hoping to extract the myricetin out of it to be able to use them in the formulation. So it is a widely available in nature, but like extraction process might require some other steps. Thanks, great work. Thank you. Okay, we're, we're at the end of our uh, Q&A period. Our time limit's up, so. Uh, I want to thank Epec for a great presentation and uh, a very nice discussion about the intricacies of her research and the, the basis behind a lot of it. So uh, now we're going to move on to our next speaker. And uh, our next speaker is Lin Lu, and she is from the Food and Technology Center at the University of Nebraska Lincoln. The title of her talk is Extrusion of 3D Printing and Oxidative Stability of high oil content printing paste formulated with waxes based oleo gels. And uh, one, of, she has her biography here. Um, she's a PhD candidate at uh, Lincoln, Nebraska. She joined the research group of Dr. Ozen Sifti in 2018 in the fall. Uh, and she's currently working on 3D food printing focused on high oil content paste. Uh, she enjoys her research in developing high oil content paste and understanding uh, the implications of 3D printing uh, by using liquid oil and other common food macronutrients as printing materials. So, uh, so without further ado, we'll have uh, Ling Lu present her paper.
Thanks for your introduction. I'm Ying Liu, and today I will present the 3D footprinting with wax-based audio drum. So 3D footprinting is a new boot technology, which is controlled using computer A design to shape the 3D objects by layer by layer deposition. So what can 3D footprinting bring us? Besides the keywords, at least here, let's do some imagination. Every day in the morning, before we go outside for the work or school, we set up the food material in the kitchen and then take out our phone, open the app, choose our preferred recipe and uh, probably the processing message and then set the starting time. When you finish everything and get home, we will see the food ready to eat and probably in the very interesting and attractive shape. So that's the vision for the future of 3D footprinting. But currently we still have a long way to go there. And one urgent problem is to seek more printable food material or more material that can help improve the printability or post the printing property. In our previous work, we developed a model printing paste containing the high content liquid oil. This printing paste can print the dimensional shape bytes here by using extrusion based 3D food printer. Well, the remaining problem, one is the physical stability because normally the shape will be broken after several hours of the printing. And the, the other concern is about the oxidative stability, especially when we use the omega-3 oil. The wax-based oil gels are the potential solution to solve the problems. Wax can form the oil gel changing the state of liquid oil to solid or solid-like. So here, the oil gels were formed by using the three commercial wax, the beef wax, the canina wax, and canuba wax, and also the one lab extracted wax, the sorghum DDGX wax. For commercial wax oil gel, the printability was used when the wax concentration in the oil gel ranged from 2% to 6%. Well, for the lab extracted wax, the sorghum DDGX wax, since this, uh, this wax uh, only contained the 50% wax and it also contained the 40% oil inside. So the shape, shape will collapse uh, during the printing when the wax concentration reached 6% in the oil gel. With the ICM results, we can see here, the microstructure actually became loosened due to the unpolar property of wax. So if the wax concentration in the oil gel increased to 8% or higher, the printing field for all the oil gel paste. If the wax oil gel were not formulated in the paste, the physical stability for the control sample was two days. But with the cooperation of wax oil gel, the days can be extended. We can see here the 6% uh, beef wax oil gel can extend the day to 53 days and 6% canina wax can extend the day to the 21 days. For the correlation heat map uh, analysis, we can see the viscosity and the storage modulus were significantly related to, to the printability. And overall, within the applied wax concentration range in this project, the higher concentration in the oil gel maintain the physical stability better. And also, when the oil leaking area was measured to reflect the oil controlling capacity, we can see uh, this post printing property were closely related to the wax concentration and the particle size. The smaller particle size can help control the oil uh, leaking area. Then the fish oil oil gel was formed to you and used to print the shape bites. We can see here by formulating by formulating the wax oil gel into the printing paste, the production of the primary oxidative um, products and secondary products can be reduced during the oven test. So let's make some conclusion here. The wax oil gel can be used as a material for 3D food printing. The, also the sorghum wax show the potential application as a new wax source in this area. And wax oil gel can help to maintain the physical stability and increase the oil controlling capacity and also in, improve the oxidative stability for the omega-3 oil paste. 
So that's all for my presentation today. Thank you for your attention. Well, thanks for a great uh, presentation. Uh, really, really neat. Um, you know, practical physical things about designing foods with 3D printers. That's, uh, that's wonderful. So we're going to uh, open up your paper to discussion now and questions by the judges and the audience. Uh, and we'll let them go ahead. Okay, I have a question. Thank you, um, Ling Yi. Uh, for your very futurist uh, presentation for the 3D printed print uh, printed food, um, my question is to the oxidation stability. Um, after two days, you can see your x value and also the um, the the secondary oxidation product are very high already. So, um, may you um, uh, can you just um, tell um, tell me what's actually the oxidation condition you used and uh, um, how can you explain that uh, such a higher uh, um, oxidation uh, still in the, the using the box? Thank you for your question. So, um, yeah, uh, I just want to confirm your question. So you're asking about how the um, how did I uh, how did I do during the experiment and for the oxidative stability for the uh, to elect yeah. the result, right? Yes, for, uh, for example, the, uh, you store your the 3D printed uh, uh, samples in uh, uh, which condition, what temperature and uh, yeah, humidity or something like that. I think the main, main uh, question is the temperature because the, the oxidized rate comes after two days. Yeah, for, uh, for the oven test here, uh, for the each each point, and um, I will print the same uh, print the shape wise and uh, shape the wise uh, to put them at the oven at forty uh, centigrade, and for the as the uh, sample picking up days, the zero days, the two days, I will select the sample from the oven for the whole shape wise and extract the um, oil, and then. Dried um, the dried solvent by the nitrogen uh, drying method, and then um, analyze the uh, the peroxide value and the PNC value. Okay, so you extract the oil from your sample and put them in the box. Yes. I extract the sample from the sample, uh, from, uh, I extract the oil from the samples. And I think for the, uh, your question about the, um, the days two, the P, uh, the peroxide value was a little bit high because for the, to, pre to prepare the uh, oil job, the sample will uh, heat it at the line, uh, 90 centigrade for maybe uh, for 10 to 15 minutes. It depends on the when the wax will be met, uh, melted. So I think maybe it will be the problem to cause the of uh, the increase about this primary oxidative product. Got it. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. I may also add a question um, to this topic. So thanks first of all for your great uh, for a great presentation. I also really much enjoyed it. So how do you explain the difference um, between these different oil gels with regard to the oxidative stability of this fish oil printed objects? Because you showed a nice graph with the different lines, now they use different oil gels um, with different waxes, and there were quite some differences um, 
that I used these wax or other waxes, yeah? So how can you explain these differences? So why, uh, yeah. Yeah, so uh, your question is about how to um, explain the difference about the uh, various, the wax, the oleo to against the, the oxidative stability, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, so for this um, question, yeah, we can see from the graph, the piece, we can see the for, uh, the wax concentration in the oligos for the fish oil oxidative stability was 4% for all the wax uh, oligo um, printing paste. And we can see the beeswax uh, um, display the strongest protective against the, the oxidative degradation. But they're either from the primary products or the secondary products. And then we can see the sorghum DVJX wax follow uh, was the second uh, best. For the, um, because for the commercial wax, they are, their purity was, should be beyond the 90, uh, 99% is uh, pure wax. We can see the protection is only from the uh, oleage of protection because the wax can, can wrap the fish oil in the printing, um, in the paste sample, the printed sample, and then they can avoid the, the um, contact with the air with the, uh, and in the open test, so they can show the protection. But for the sorghum DDJX wax, it's not, uh, it's hard to see because it's only the 50% wax. We can see it protects, but also it should have some other components inside because we, um, after the extraction, we can see the color was a little bit yellow, yellowish. So it should be some minor components contained. That's what we are going to do in the future. Okay. And why have you not tested also the 6% um, wax OLED, OLED gels? Because they showed to have a higher physical stability, right? Um, yes, for the 6% uh, oil gel, they show the, for the beeswax and canina wax, they show the best uh, physical stability uh, improvement. And what about the oxidative stability for the 6%? Yeah, for the oxidative stability, uh, since the, for the uh, sorghum DDJX wax, we couldn't print it with the 6%, so uh, mm -hmm. we only did the 4%. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, very nice presentation. Thank you very much. Uh, I wanted to come back to uh, the preparation of the of the mix you mentioned before you'll be able to do the 3D footprinting. You will have to uh, get the temperature to 90 degree, right? Yes. How, how long does that last for 90 degree before you're able to print it? Uh, for, uh, uh, first, I, I want to confirm the question first. <laughs> so uh, your question is about the, uh, the heating time before I mix them together, right? Yes, yeah. Yeah, for the difference, for the different values, uh, their time to totally dissolve in the oil was different. And the Kaluba wax was the most difficult to uh, dissolve in the um, uh, liquid oil. So it will take the longer, uh, the, I will, I will, for the total time, it should be the 15 minutes. With the way uh, we mix them with uh, on the stir bar and on the magnetic uh, heating mat. Oh, thank you very much. And do you think about something that you can add as ingredient to facilitate the mixing process, so the temperature impact is last for a shorter time? Yes, we can um, by using the ultrasonic uh, method. That time can be uh, shortened. Mm -hmm. yeah. We tried that, but by using this, uh, during this method, we only use the heating plate. I see, thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, that's the end of our, our time for questions and answers. So I uh, appreciate it, Lane, very great project. Nice presentation and uh, thank you for your follow-up with uh, judges' questions. Wonderful project.
All right, our next speaker is uh, Roman Sobolov. Uh, Roman is going to present a paper study of the oxidative stability of oleogel structured with beeswax fractions. So uh, Roman is from the Federal Research Center of Nutrition, Biotechnology, and Food Safety Laboratory uh, in Russia. And for the special dietary uses of special dietary uses. Roman Sobolov is a laboratory assistant at the Federal Research Center of Nutrition and Biotechnology in Moscow. Now he is a PhD student in the area of industrial ecology and biotechnology. To prepare his PhD thesis, he engaged in research in the field of fractionation of beeswax by preparative flash chromatography and biotechnology techniques. He received a master's degree from IUDN University in Moscow and a bachelor's degree from MSUFP in Moscow. So uh, we, we're honored to have you, Roman, and I know it's late in Moscow, so thanks for, for uh, attending us here, and we look forward to your talk. Hi, everyone. Uh, Doug, thanks for the introduction. My work is to focus on the study of the oxidative stability of all our gels structured with beeswax and its fractions. Uh, the, pro, uh, the process of preparing allergies is associated with uh, heat treatment, which carries the risk of developing oxidative process. Currently, the result of studies on the oxidative stability of wax allergies are ambiguous. Both antioxidant and prooxidant effects of uh, gel formation have been shown, uh, which may be due to different factors. Uh, these factors are the reason for our choice of hypothesis for the study. According for the first hypothesis, uh, oxidative stability of allergies is related to the influence of the component in the gelatin. According to the second hypothesis, it's related to the uh, with the texture of the allergel. Uh, the objective of uh, testing these hypotheses was to study the effect of the composition and uh, texture of the other gel on the oxidative stability. To achieve this objective, the following experiment was conducted. Uh, generally, the study can be divided into two stages. Uh, the first stage includes the fractionation of beeswax and identification of the component composition. The second stage uh, includes the preparation and analysis of all our gels in sunflower oil. A fatty acid composition analysis was performed for all samples. Next, uh, to test the first hypothesis, the induction period of the samples was uh, determined and the uh, temperature above the melting point at 90 degrees Celsius. To test the second hypothesis, the samples were stored for 20 days below the gel and temperatures. The evaluation of the accumulation of primary and secondary oxidation products, as well as the text change of the samples, uh, was carried out. Feature one shows a typical beeswax fractionation chromatogram. The isolated fractions are labeled with capital Latin letters A, B, C, and D. The results of the analysis of these fractions are presented in Feature 2 and Table 1. In this work, we used uh, beeswax and combination of its fractions A, B, A, B, C, and A, B, D as a delta. Fatty acid analysis uh, showed no significant differences among the samples. Feature three uh, shows that the initial uh, feature three uh, shows the analysis of the induction periods of the samples. We show that the initial sunflower oil had the highest stability during oxidation above the melting temperatures. All gels on beeswax and combination ABD fractions were the less stable. Uh, correlation analysis of uh, the induction period uh, with the content of free fatty acids uh, revealed a close inversely proportional relationship. The findings support uh, hypothesis one that the composition of the oleo gels, uh, regardless of texture, influences oxidative stability. 
When testing hypothesis two, we found that the sample of sunflower oil, according to all methods of evaluation, showed itself to, to be more stable in oxidation. In oxidation. The other gel based on hydrocarbons and monoesters uh, turned out to be, uh, to be more stable. The main volatile organic compounds of the samples are aldehydes, uh, ketones, and uh, to a lesser extent, uh, alcohols and terpenes. Note uh, that the terpene limonene was found in the other gels, which can affect the result of anisidine value measurement. Samples on a uh, combination of fractions showed a higher Yang modulus during storage uh, than the beeswax based other gel. The correlation analysis of the collected data revealed an inverse relation of Yang modulus of other gels and a direct relation of free fatty acids concentration with the rate of oxidation product accumulation. The second, the second hypothesis it's, uh, is also supported by the results. As a result of the study, it was determined uh, that the chemical composition as well as texture can influence the oxidative stability of other gels. The results showed the use of beeswax fractions compared to the beeswax itself results uh, in fat-containing products with high oxidative stability. Thanks for your attention. All right, Roman, hey, thanks for a great talk. Um, fascinating, and uh, I love TLC. <laughs> so, so this was uh, uh, very nice. And, uh, so now we're gonna open your paper to the judges' questions and the audience questions, and I'll let people know if there's any audience questions uh, for them. So we'll start with questions. May I start and ask the questions? So thank you so much for the presentation. I also very much liked it. And um, my question was in the direction of this of the, of the oxidative stability of all the gels you showed. So you um, explain the higher or the oxidative stability of the oil gels um, is dependent, of course, on the chemical composition of these oil gels. But um, you mainly also attributed it to the free fatty acids, right? But um, have you also looked at some other um, chemical compositions besides um, the free fatty acids that might also have an impact on the oxidative stability of uh, these oil gels? Uh, no, we... Uh, uh, Okay, thanks for your questions. Uh, we uh, also uh, research uh, the metal in uh, beeswax and uh, phenolic compounds. Okay, so have you had a look at the, the content of these metals and these polyphenols in, in your oil gels? And could you see a correlation um, between this, between the oxidative stability and, and the polyphenolic and metal content? Or is this something you're going to do in the, as a next step? Uh, uh, correlation uh, not be, uh, not be uh, revealed. Oh, okay, so there was no correlation between yeah. the polyphenol content and the metal the direct The direct uh, correlation not be found. Okay. okay. Okay, good, thank you.
maybe some other questions from my colleagues. <laughs> Touches or from the audience, I don't know whether we got some received some questions. I see any in the audience questions, which has been the, the rule for this afternoon. Uh, please send us in. I have a quick question, uh, Ronan. Thank you very much for, for your presentation. Can you tell us more about uh, the analytical method that you use to uh, characterize the different aldehydes? Uh, thanks for your questions. Uh, uh, we used uh, um, solid uh, headspace uh, chromatography. Solid uh, solid fuzz uh, micro extraction. And so you have all the aldehydes within the one run, or you do have different methods for, for each of them? Um, uh, uh, we used uh, standard methods uh, as, uh, in chromatography. Thank you. And can you explain uh, what would be the next step uh, in your research? What are you going to, to demonstrate as a next phase? Um, I think uh, our need to uh, research uh, related with the uh, uh, combination, more and more uh, research with combination of fractions. I see. Thank you. Is, is beeswax used in food production currently or in uh, uh, different food processing technologies? Oh, beeswax, uh, very in this product. Uh, and uh, uh, we uh, Purchased uh, our beeswax, beeswax for our research uh, from the beekeepers. Okay. I, uh, I raise apples also, and you know, we have bees <laughs> that we have for pollination. So honey and beeswax are uh, wonderful things. So, uh, but, uh, right. Any other questions? I'll check the audience quick. Judges, any more questions? Okay, uh, that'll be the conclusion. So thank you, Roman. Uh, really enjoyed your presentation and uh, good science. So uh, that were great presentations. Uh, I always say it, but the students of today, when I compared to when I was a student, I think are are hitting it out of the park. So you guys did a really nice job and uh, exceptional research. Uh, really solid presentation skills. Uh, and, uh, and science, so nice job. So now we're gonna launch into our audience poll. Um, the audience uh, vote occurs only at the AOCS annual meeting website. Instructions on how to vote are posted in the chat. The audience vote's really important and it does impact the placement of our top finisher. So we encourage everyone in the audience today to vote for their favorite pitch. Um, the scores are then tallied, and we'll be back in a few minutes to announce the winner of the AOCS Student Poster Pitch Competition uh, after that. So,
Judges' scores have been tallied, and we have the results. Um, the first place winner receives a $200 cash prize, recognition certificate, and a complimentary 2023 AOCS student membership. And our second place winner receives a $100 cash prize and recognition certificate. So the runner up for today is Ling Lu from University of, of Nebraska, Lincoln. So congratulations, Ling. Um, and the first place winner today is uh, Epic Byron from uh, University of uh, Massachusetts at Amherst. So congratulations and uh, uh, really appreciate your efforts and presentation today and uh, look forward to interacting with you more in the future at AOCS. Thank you. Thank you.